Hey guys, in this extensive guide, we're gonna go over what exactly a short sale means for a homeowner, and we're gonna answer really important questions a homeowner needs to know when they're dealing with a pre-foreclosure and considering a short sale. We're gonna cover five key areas. We're gonna go over how a short sale works, how exactly a short sale affects your credit after the fact, how soon after a short sale are you able to obtain another mortgage, what are the tax implications of a short sale? And finally, what are the pros and cons of performing a short sale? First, let me introduce myself. My name's Bob Vieira. I'm the owner of Universal Short Sales, America's fastest growing short sale processing company. And this video is powered by House Cash In, one of the fastest growing platforms connecting distressed homeowners to real estate investors that could help them. Now let's dive right in. If you want to sell your house very fast for cash, then House Cash In gets the cash flowing. Today I'm going to talk to you about what is the definition of a short sale? What does it mean when you hear people talk about a short sale in real estate? So let's get started. A short sale in real estate simply means your lender is going to allow you to sell your house for less than what you owe on the mortgage balance. And that difference between what you owe is called the deficiency, and that gets wiped away clean, guys. Typically, in a traditional sale, you'd have to pay that money back, but in a short sale situation, the lender is saying, okay, we're willing to take a loss on the property and let you walk away from paying us that excess debt. And most importantly, guys, it does not get recorded as a foreclosure on your record. Let's take a look at this example. Let's say you're a borrower and you owe the bank $100,000 on your mortgage balance. The problem is your property is only worth $70,000 as is. Well, in a short sale situation, your lender is gonna let you sell for the 70 grand that it's worth, and that $30,000, that excess money, that deficiency, that gets wiped away clean. The lenders, again, they're willing to take a loss, let you walk away from that debt, and most importantly, they're not gonna record it as a foreclosure on your financial record. Today, I'm gonna to go over briefly the step-by-step -step process that a seller has to look forward to when they decide to do a short sale. So let's dive right in. First step, you're gonna reach out to a short sale processing company. You're gonna interview them, ask them a couple qualifying questions, make sure you're comfortable. They're gonna ask some questions to you to make sure a short sale makes sense, and then you go from there. Step number two, once you decide the correct processing company to go with, that company is gonna submit third-party authorization to the lender, which essentially allows them the legal right to obtain information and discuss sensitive information regarding your file, the loan file. During this process, guys, there's gonna be documentation passed back and forth, there's going to be different kind of information, questions and answers. A lot's going to be going on in this step. Once the documentation is complete, everything short sale related, it's going to take us to step three, which is to contact a local real estate agent to get your property listed and sold for a good market value price. Now, the agent's going to reach out to you. It's going to be very similar to a traditional listing. They're going to want to take pictures, they're going to want to evaluate the property, list it a certain way, so on and so forth. Step four, hopefully this happens quick for you, an offer is going to come in, maybe multiple offers. Your job as the seller, you're going to get with the listing agent and you guys are going to decide the best offer to submit to the lender, the offer that's going to give you the best opportunity to get the short sale completed and approved. Once that offer is submitted, brings us to the next step, step number five, the lender is going to review the offer and they're going to order an appraisal. That appraisal is either going to be A, a BPO, which stands for Broker Price Opinion, or B, a full interior appraisal, which is a little bit more expensive for the lender. After the appraisal is conducted, it's going to bring you to step six, which is based off of that appraisal. Whatever the number comes in at, the lender is either going to accept the offer 
or they're going to counter offer the buyer. If they counter the offer, typically a some sort of negotiation will ensue back and forth, and then hopefully they meet at a number and it gets accepted, which brings us to step seven, which the lender agrees to a price. They'll then issue an official short sale approval letter. Nothing's official till you get that letter. And then it brings us to step eight, closing. You could breathe a sigh of relief. It's all over with. You can move on with your life and the short sale is completed. How is the short sale going to affect my credit? Well, there's two components you need to keep in mind. First component is a foreclosure versus a short sale. That answer is very simple. A short sale is going to look much better on your credit report than a foreclosure is. That's for numerous reasons, guys. I mean, the, the most important reason is for future creditors looking at your credit report, whether, they're, whether it's a future bank, you want to get another house loan, whether it's a personal loan you want, whatever the case is, the, the lender is going to look at your report and realize they're going to say, okay, John here, you know, he ran into a short-term hardship, hit a rough patch, don't we all sometimes? But the important part is he figured it out. He figured out a way to settle his debt with his lender rather than just letting the property foreclose. The second component you're going to want to remember is yes, a short sale absolutely has a negative effect on your credit report. I hear people say all the time falsely that it doesn't affect it at all. It's just simply not true. So the best way to describe how much of a hit a short sale is going to have on your credit. It's really a case by case basis, but the best way to describe it is the higher your credit score is to begin with prior to the short sale, the more points it's going to decrease after the short sale. And that goes vice versa. The lower your credit score is coming into a short sale, the less points it's going to decrease. Random example. And again, I'm, you know, I don't want to use exact numbers because it's a case by case basis, but let's say you come into a short sale and your credit is a 750. Let's say you have a great credit score. Well, the short sale is probably going to take a hit between 100 to maybe even 150 points. It's probably going to be over a 100 point swing decrease on your credit score. Let's say you come into the credit with prior to the short sale, you have a credit of 600 a little bit lower. In that case, you might be looking at a hit of 100 to maybe 60 point decrease after the short sale. And again, please keep in mind, those are all rough numbers, rough estimates. It's truly a case by case basis. How long is the short sale going to stay on my credit? That's another very common question we get after someone completes a short sale. This is another answer that really varies. This answer is going to depend on your action steps after the short sale is completed. What do I mean by action steps? The most common action step is contacting a credit repair agency, for example, after the short sale is completed, consulting with them and figuring out the strategies you need to take in order to get back on track with your credit in the least amount of time. Another one you could use, guys, is paying down any small debt that you have after the short sale. Common example could be if you have, let's say, a low balance left on your car plan, or let's say a small personal loan you could pay off, or a high credit card utilization rate that you could pay off. Anything like that is really going to help you get back on track and get to the point where you could get another loan in the near future, or you can get a higher credit score in the near future. As far as an accurate time frame, again, it's really tough to give you one. I'd hate to just make something up. You're looking at anywhere between three to seven years. And again, that depends on your action steps. If you take the correct actions after the short sale, you're going to be closer to the three years. Will I be able to apply for another mortgage in the near future? So the answer is yes, although it's probably going to take you a couple of years, usually between two to four, and that's a best case scenario. Now, there's a couple of loan options that are going to work great for you that you're going to want to look into. First type of loan is a non-qualified mortgage. 
aka a non-QM loan. This is very simply a mortgage that a qualified buyer typically not going to be interested in. It's something that a non-qualified buyer is going to have to deal with higher interest rates and other unfavorable terms. But look, it's still something you're going to want to look into and it may make sense for you after a short sale. Second type of loan is government-backed loans such as Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, etc. With these types of loans, they will consider you if it's within two to four years after the short sale is completed and you're going to have to put into writing your hardship and prove to them that it's a short-term hardship. They want to understand and make sure that your slip up in the past isn't something that's long-term and didn't have a long-term financial effect on you. The next loan is an FHA loan. FHA loan is going to have the same guidelines after the short sale, roughly two to four year period. And they're going to, again, they're going to want to make sure that you put in writing that it's a short term hiccup in the past. It's not something that's going to happen again. And there's nothing for them to worry about. It's in the past. Okay. So earlier on in the video, we talked about how if a short sale is processed correctly, you do not have to pay the deficiency. Just a quick reminder on what the deficiency is. In that example I gave early on, when you owed $100,000, your property sold for $70,000, that $30,000 difference is your deficiency. So the good news is you don't have to pay the 30 grand. The bad news is you're still gonna get taxed for that $30,000. When you complete a short sale, the bank is gonna send you, usually through the mail, sometimes at settlement, what's called a tax form 1099C. You're gonna to wanna to write that down, very, very important. Again, it's a 1099C. What that document is, it's a tax instrument in which the lender uses to send to the IRS so that the IRS knows that that's taxable income and unfortunately, you are gonna to have to pay taxes on that deficiency balance. Again, from the example, it's that $30,000. Very important to note, when the short sale is concluded and everything is said and done, you're gonna to wanna to keep all of your documentation. Sounds like common sense, but believe me, you'd be surprised. Now, when you're working with a real estate agent, a short sale processor, maybe there's an attorney involved, the chances are the professionals that represent you are probably gonna have copies of all these documents. But again, it's really gonna help if you have them yourself. You're probably asking, why does it matter? A couple of reasons. One of the reasons is for accounting purposes. We spoke a little bit earlier about the 1099C and how the short sale is gonna be taxed. Well, your accountant or whether you do TurboTax yourself or however you do it, you're going to need the documentation from the short sales in order to complete your taxes. That's the first reason. The second reason is the people that work at the bank, which you already know, they're human, just like you and I. Just like you and I, they make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. It's not a big deal. However, it is a big deal if the mistake is reporting your property incorrectly in their system. It doesn't happen often, but every once in a while, somebody from the bank will report that the property has actually foreclosed or maybe accidentally reported as a deed in lieu. Stuff like this is possible. It's few and far between, but it's possible. Don't be a victim. Save all your documentation. You'll be happy you did so if something like this happens. A very common question we get during the short sale process is, can the bank still foreclose on my house even though it's listed as a short sale? In short, the answer is absolutely yes, they could still foreclose on the property. So there's two very important components you need to remember when considering this. The first component is, if the property is merely listed as a short sale and you don't have a valid offer yet, and an auction date is set by the lender, then they could absolutely foreclose because there's no offer. Example, let's say today was January 2nd 
and the lender set an auction date of January 11th. In that situation, if you have the property listed and that January 11th date comes, it doesn't matter. They could absolutely foreclose on the property even though it's listed as a short sale. The second component you wanna remember is they will postpone, they'll never cancel, be careful here, they're gonna postpone the auction date and the foreclosure if you have a valid offer put in front of them. Let's go back to that same example. Let's say your realtor has your property listed in the MLS and it's January 2nd and an offer comes in. That auction date that they have at January 11th is likely going to get postponed because the bank is looking over what they consider a valid offer. A couple things to remember with the valid offer. You can't just take it and submit it to the lender as a traditional sale because they're going to reject it. By the time they do that, your property is probably going to get foreclosed upon. So it's very important that along with the offer, you need the supporting documentation such as preliminary HUD, buyer proof of funds, buyer LLC if applicable, so on and so forth. All right, so let's take a look at some of the pros and some of the cons at completing a short sale. Pro number one is the obvious one, you get to avoid foreclosure. I mentioned in previous videos and I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it does not get recorded as a foreclosure on your record once you complete the short sale. Another one, Take back your freedom. You take back your freedom and your peace of mind. No more threatening letters from the bank. No more calls from creditors of other debt associated with the property. All that's over with. You're able to walk away and just carry on with your life. Another benefit, well, it's a possible benefit, guys, is relocation assistance. Relocation assistance is offered. You're only eligible if you're the primary owner of the property. That's real important. The property has to be in your primary name. Example, it can't be an investment property. It can't be a multifamily property you bought for cash flow. It's got to be the property you're living in. It has to be. And even from there, the actual investor on the loan who owns your loan has to offer relocation assistance for you to be eligible. But look, if you're eligible, it's a beautiful thing. You get typically between $1,000 and $3,000 to leave the property, it's great, it's awesome, you get paid at settlement. No deficiency judgment is another huge benefit. Again, mention this in previous videos, mention this at the beginning of this video, the deficiency is that balance in between what you owe the bank and what it's sold for, and you do not have to pay that back, so it's a great benefit. The bank pays all the realtor commissions, and hopefully all the rest of the closing cost. Because remember, at the end of the day, you're signing the offer, but the bank is approving it. So they're technically the seller on the HUD. So they're usually covering all of those costs most of the time. No legal fees. There's no legal fees as if you were going into a foreclosure. There's no foreclosure attorney involved. Now, don't get me wrong. If you have a family attorney you like to work with, if you have a foreclosure attorney that you feel comfortable with and you want them to look over the legalities and protect you, absolutely 100% use them in the transaction because your short sale processor or your real estate agent will keep them updated step by step. So I'm not saying don't use them, but you don't have to go through the expensive legal process of compensating an attorney to bring you through the entire foreclosure process that can be very long and very expensive. Believe it or not guys, lenders like short sales. It sounds crazy, but they really do. There's a million and one reasons why they like short sales. That's, that's information for a separate video. But to put it simply, a bank is a business. Short sales are bad debt and they want it off their books. That simple. And look, short sales are straightforward, which is another great benefit. There's this misconception that they're complicated and they're crazy and they're hectic. But if they're processed correctly, believe it or not, they're very straightforward. Think about it, especially on the seller side. There's no emotion involved. Think about if you're negotiating with a seller for their home. Oh, well, I lived in this house and I raised my kids in this house, so this is my counteroffer. When it comes to a short sale, 
There's none of that. The bank is very straightforward. They're going to make a counter offer or an acceptance based off of the numbers and the facts. That's it. That's all they care about. Now let's get to some negative consequences, some of the cons of doing a short sale because there's absolutely pros and cons to everything you do in life. Now, it has a negative impact on credit. I mentioned this before. It's an absolute fact. It's going to negatively impact your credit. Another negative is the bank has final say. You might be the one signing the offer, but at the end of the day, the bank decides what your property sells for and really whether or not it sells in the first place. And the last, uh, the last negative impact is that deficiency balance that you don't have to pay back. Awesome news. However, still have to pay taxes on it. So it's a good situation, but it's not a great situation because you're still taxed with that 1099C. Okay, guys, we're going to take a look at some of the key differences between a short sale and a foreclosure. Very important to break everything down when you're deciding which is the best route for you to go. So let's get started. First key factor you're going to want to look at, what are the credit effects of a short sale versus a foreclosure? As I discussed previously in the video, a short sale does have a negative effect on your credit. However, compared to a foreclosure, it's much less of a negative impact on your credit. Another important thing to remember is when a creditor, when your future creditor, whether it's a credit card company, a bank, whoever guys, when they look at that credit report, it looks a lot better for them to see a short sale than a foreclosure because you're explaining to them, or they're seeing rather, that you were able to make an effort to settle on your bad debt. Second factor you wanna look at is relocation assistance. With a foreclosure, relocation assistance is possible. Typically it's in the form of cash for keys, but it's a lot less common and it's a lot less likely. And really it's a case by case basis and you have no way of knowing whether or not the bank's going to pay you to leave. With a short sale, as we discussed previous, as long as the loan that's defaulting is in your primary name, if that home is listed as your primary residence, then you're automatically qualified for relocation assistance. The only other factor you need to come into play is whether or not the investor on the loan offers relocation assistance. If those two factors meet, Congratulations, you get relocation in a short sale. The third and final factor you want to look at is saving yourself money. How much is it going to cost you out of pocket doing a foreclosure compared to a short sale? I can tell you right now, foreclosures are very expensive. You could look to spend up to just on lawyer fees alone in the thousands of dollars. On average, it costs around $7,500 or more for a homeowner to perform a foreclosure. Short sale, on the other hand, if it's processed correctly, it should cost you nothing. Because remember, the bank, the bank is the seller on the HUD. So the decision's up to them, and they're acting as the final seller on that settlement sheet. So typically, they're gonna pay most, if not all, of your closing cost. All right, everybody, let's take a look at a short sale versus a deed in lieu of foreclosure option. Let's take a look at availability. As long as you meet the lender's criteria, which is typically underwater on your mortgage, defaulting on the loan, and you have a good hardship, you're, there's a very high probability you're gonna be able to do a short sale. Whereas a deed in lieu, it's really a case by case basis, and the lender is usually a lot more weary to do a deed in lieu of foreclosure. For example, a lot of times they get sued over this, they find themselves spending tons of money in litigation, and there's just other gray areas that typically will make a lender hesitant to do a deed in lieu of foreclosure. Let's take a look at credit effects. A short sales we discussed many times in the past does have a negative effect, but there's numerous ways you could rebound and get back on your feet from a short sale. There's different loan options, there's ways you could structure those loan options, so on and so forth. A deed in lieu of foreclosure, on the other hand, very similar to a uh, foreclosure. Same credit effects as a foreclosure, and it typically stays on your credit as long as a foreclosure does. 
So the concluding question is when and why should I do a short sale on my home? Let's start with the why. You're gonna make your list of all the benefits and the disadvantages that a short sale would have on your life in your specific situation right now. Study the list, and if the benefits outweigh the cons, then you probably need to do a short sale. Let's look at the when. This is very simple and very straightforward. As soon as possible. Guys, as soon as you determine that a short sale is in the best interest of you and your family, you need to act quickly. I can't tell you how many times I run into people that make the decision that they need to do a short sale and it's the best thing for them and their family, but for some reason, they drag their feet and they wait. And the one thing I can promise you is not gonna wait, it's that foreclosure auction date. That's not waiting for anybody. So make your decision. If a short sale is the best thing for you, act on it quickly. That's the best advice I could give you. Guys, I hope that helps and I look forward to speaking with you on the next video. Have a great day. If you wanna sell your house very fast for cash, then house cash in gets the cash flowing.